So, we'll proceed now with the next presenter from uh, Marine Science Institute, si Dr. Deo Onda. And he's going to discuss something on potential biodegradation of plastics by marine microbes. Yeah, so hello, good morning. Can, any, can everybody hear me? Okay, na po ba? Hello? Yes, Deo. Okay, thank you. Um, so again, thank you for uh, joining us in this session. And uh, I'd like to thank again the organizers for the invitation. So coming from the terrestrial environment, from the atmosphere, to the large organisms such as trees and seaweeds, I'll be discussing more or I'll be uh, uh, giving you a tour of the world of the unseen, the microorganisms, and how it is actually affecting or influencing the, the, the a very controversial controversial issue right now, which is actually plastics. So um, I made the title of my presentation is Colonization and Potential Biodegradation of Plastics by Marine Microbes. Um, before I proceed with the presentation, uh, I just would like to introduce my... Sure. Yes? Naka speaker view, uh, view ka sa yung PowerPoint. Uh, okay, sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, so it's it. sorry for that. So before I proceed, I just would like to give a brief uh, presentation. Then back again. Yes. There? You're still in speaker view, Leo. Yes. Yeah. Is that better? Wait. Yeah. Wait. Okay. There. Okay. Na? okay uh, yes. Sorry. Sorry Thank you. Uh, I have an extension screen. Um. So. Uh. I'm from the Marine Microbial Oceanography Laboratory of the UPMSI, and I'm heading this lab that actually looks uh, about everything in the mi about microbes. Uh, the hashtag of the lab is actually everything in marine microbes. So we're involved in different microbial research, including their involvement in marine plastics, polar research, harmful algal blooms, and biodiversity and biogeography of microorganisms. So we already know that plastics is a very controversial controversial issue, and uh, we had been bombarded with different images of dolphins, mammals, marine mammals dying because of ingestion and entanglement. But if you actually look back into how the plastics is affecting the ecosystems, it is influencing each and every compartment of the trophic food web, from the very smallest, from the smallest microorganisms to actually the top predators such as mammals, including humans. So, but there's still a lot of things that we don't know about their interaction with the base of the food chain, which are the microorganisms. So this presentation will really mainly focus on this. We would like to give a, a perspective on how plastics are affecting the base of the food web and therefore the entire food web and ecosystem functioning. Um, the, the results that I'll be present to, presenting to you is included in a big pre frame, research framework called Plasmix, Plastics and Microbes Project. Uh, basically, we are just interested in looking at or following the journey of the plastics when it is released into the marine environment, what are the first organisms that actually attach to it, how the other microorganisms are uh, affecting its buoyancy, sinking, and how probably microorganisms are also facilitating the transfer or biomagnification of the plastics in the ma marine food web. So the first thing that we did was to do a s experiment and expose the plastics in the uh, in the marine habitat, and we were curious what's going to happen if you actually release the plastics in the marine environment. And this is what we saw. And there was actually a uh, accumulation of biofilms or a layer of microbial organisms, and you would see the thickening or the maturation of this biofilm into a very thick uh, composition of different organisms. And this is important because the change in the density of the plastic with the accumulation of different organisms also changes the buoyancy. And that would promote the sinking 
and sinking would result in the deposition of the plastics into the sediments where it is far from UV uh, degradation, the far from uh, interaction with marine mammals and different organisms. Um, when we looked at the organisms or the community that is associated with the plastic and then compared it with the surrounding environment, we saw that it is actually very different. So this PCOA plot just shows you the red corresponds to the communities or the samples that were attached to the plastic and the blue corresponds to the surrounding environment, which is the water column. And you will really see that there's a difference. There's a big difference in terms of community composition and the structure of the, commu of the microbial communities attached to plastics in the surrounding environment. Then when we look at the succession, we saw that uh, there's, there's a big uh, shift in the community structure or the composition of the microorganisms that actually attach to plastics. So the, the, high, the one highlighted in the red box are the organisms that you would only see on the first day of incubation. And then you would see other unique organisms that would attach after a week or after two weeks. And then new organisms are attaching into the uh, biofilm after a few weeks. This just tells us that there is actually a succession. There might be a probable uh, potential community shift, which would also mean that there is also a shift in the functional groups that would affect or the, the fate of the plastics. And this uh, microorganisms, the biofilm, would then recruit other multicellular organisms later on. The aggregate, the composition of this biofilm of bacteria, archaea, and the microbial eukaryotes are, is, now known, is now known as the plastosphere. It is a unique environment within the plastic, different from the surrounding environment. And this plastosphere is very important also because it masks the properties of the plastic. It gives the plastics the new, uh, new uh, olfactory or chemosensory properties. Um, the fish or the copepod that likes eating dinoflagellates and phytoplankton would find a lot of it attached to, pla to plastics and therefore would ingest the plastic together with these microbial communities. And that could actually facilitate the plastic bioaccumulation in the food web as uh, depicted in this figure where you start with the microplastics, attachment of the plankton, uh, predation by small fish, and then biomagnification or accumulation into the trophic food web. The other thing about the plastosphere or the community attached to plastics is that some of the species are not are, are also could be pathogenic, antibiotic resistant. Some are viruses that could cause illnesses and some invasive or unwanted organisms. So these are some of the plastics that we collected from Manila Bay, for example. And then we found certain hubs or red tide species that are actually attached to the plastic. The question is, if this red tide species are... Um, attaching to the plastic and the plastic gets dispersed somewhere else, would there be a possibility for this species to survive the transport and then invade a new uh, environment? So this makes the plastics a dispersal mechanism for many organisms. So to answer this question, um, my students went to, we went to Manila Bay and then collected plastics that are floating around in the middle of the, of the uh, embayment. And then the, the, the approach is just to really look at the composition of the communities in the plastics and in the water column and find if there is an attachment of hub species. And this is what we found. One is that the composition of diatoms that are attached to the plastics and in the, in the water are really different. But it is also not surprising to see that a lot of hub species such as Pericentrum, Protoperidinium, Alexandrium, and Gymnodinium are attached into plastics. So again, this raises the question, what is the potential of the plastics to actually disperse unwanted, invasive, pathogenic, and harmful species? But the question also is that, how are these microorganisms or the dinoflagellates uh, survive uh, the environment in the microplastic? We, we went into the sample and then looked at the, 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 the biofilm, and you would see a very diverse composition of communities. And biofilms have been shown to actually support uh, different organisms by nutrient recycling, by becoming a source of organic carbon. So we wanted to further answer this question. So uh, we did an experiment in the lab. We tried to simulate an environment where there is actually high nutrients, such as in the coast, and low nutrient environments, such as in the open ocean. And then tried to answer the question. Uh, uh, we have a hypothesis of biofilms could actually facilitate the attachment and sustain the viability of harmful algal blooms. So just some highlight of the results. Uh, this might be a bit complicated graph, but bear with me. 
the graphs are just showing you the curves are just showing you the growth of the population the the red ones are actually the attached or those ones that are sticking to the plastic and the blue one the, the blue lines correspond to the unattached or the free swimming freely swimming organisms and this just shows us that uh in an environment where there is low nutrient and the biofilm is actually present the hubs species actually go to the biofilm and attach themselves to the plastic. The reason for this is the biofilm is a rich source of nutrients. So this is a CLSM image showing you the, that there are a lot of polysaccharides, meaning that there are sources of carbon. You've got nucleic acids, you've got lipids, you've got proteins coming out from there. So there, and then you have a lot of bacteria that could be recycling these nutrients. So it is a rich nutrient free source for the harmful algal species. So it tells us that one, plastics can be a dispersal mechanism, and two, the biofilm in the plastics help the survival of the attaching species. And the next question is, what would be the implication of this to the dispersal of invasive species? We also saw that the hub species turned into temporary cysts, uh, allowing them to actually survive, potentially survive long periods of transport. So the next question is that if there are bacteria present in the plastics, could this bacteria actually possibly contribute to the degradation? Um, there are already several studies that have done this, but we would like to see if it's actually happening in the Philippine marine environment. And so uh, this, this, is a, this is an example of what we've seen. Um, you've got, uh, this is a surface erosion or morphological change in the plastic. You have a new plastic, you have a UV exposed plastic, and then you have a biofilm coated plastics. And you would really see the significant difference in the morphology. That tells us that the creation of the pits and the crevices could have been contributed by the microbial communities. So to further investigate this, we did a, a typical assay. We collected sediments from Manila Bay, and then we did uh, incubate plastic fragments with uh, sediments in a Bushnell has medium, which has no other carbon source but the plastic. But the plastic. And, we, and then we found out that the bacteria attaching to plastics are becoming enriched as time goes by. And then we also looked at how did the, the structure, molecular structure of the plastics actually change. So this figure just tells you the molecular, uh, the FTIR profile of the plastics. Now, one important thing about this figure is that there is a creation of moieties or functional groups with incubation of the microbial communities from Manila Bay. Uh, it possibly suggests that the creation of these moi moieties are associated with the biodegradation potential or activity of the different microorganisms. We wanted to know who are those organisms that are possibly contributing to the biodegradation. So we did the high throughput sequencing, targeted sequencing, and then we, we correlated the indices of biodegradation, creation of vinyl, keto, uh, a carbonyl, ester, and then the internal double bonds. And we saw that there are different groups of organisms correlated with the different biodegradation indices, suggesting that different bacteria groups are actually responsible for the degradation of plastics. So if you want to simulate a biodegradation of plastic, we need to look at the entire community. Um, we are now doing work on this, and then we have isolated some of the cultures, uh, a species in the lab, and we are doing more uh, targeted experiments. This is an example of how the bacteria are actually proliferating and growing on the surface of the plastics through time. And, uh, so we have this uh, uh, isolates already, and we are now looking at the biodegradation products. What are the underlying molecular mechanisms using omics approaches? And then what are the possible biotechnological applications of this bacteria? Um, we also have a plasmix project that has been funded by USD but got shelved because of COVID-19. We wanted to understand the implications of this to the environment, to the trophic systems, to the aquaculture, and then its implications to public health, food security, and the environment. So with that, I'd like to thank the, spot, the, the funding agencies, the OVTAA, OVCRD, um, and also the DOST Picard for hosting me as a Balik scientist. So this is my lab, and I'd like to thank again uh, everyone for your time, and I hope you enjoyed the talk. Thank you. So I yield now to the chair. Uh, Sir Deo? Yes. Sorry, I think uh, Ma'am Georgine has a question for you. Ma'am Georgine has a question. Okay, Ma'am Georgine. 
Yes, thank you for the excellent presentation. Uh, ang, in the early years, yung worry yung macroplastics, yung mga turtles, whales, and uh, ano pa, mga albatrosses. Tapos nag-shift sa microplastics. Ang sa akin, no, I'm still at the point where I was thinking, I was imagining yung microplastics being uh, ingested by fish, anong effect on the physiology of fish, and then tayo sa food chain. Yun pala, there's this other route, which is the community dispersal route, no? which is really exciting. So my question is, practical question, what percent of the microplastics that go to the ocean go the way of the <clears throat> yung community way no? of this uh, nagdidikit siya and so on, rather than the direct way of ingestion directly as uh, how many, kung ano man yung size nila by the plankton, then to the... Uh, primary consumers, and then to the humans and the effect on the physiology along the food chain. So how much of the microplastics go the community dispersal route and how much go to the direct uh, trophic route para I'll know what to worry, whether I should <laughs> worry or not. Yeah. Well, ma'am, from the studies before, we're actually focused on macroorganisms and the macroplastics. Um, I would actually say, I'm writing a book chapter right now, actually primarily discussing this. I would actually say that the literature and even the, the, the field itself of microplastics and the pathway and its route into the trophic food web is really it's in infancy. I can, I can have a figure of how many studies are just published uh, discussing about this topic. There is a, there is a suggestion that the, from the macroplastics that we see right now, they will degrade into microplastics in 10 years, 25 years to 50 years time. So it is expected that around 50% to 60% of the macroplastics will be microplastics or nanoplastics in 50 years to 100 years time. How much percentage in terms of the exact value? I, there's not much work on that, ma'am. Uh, I would not i have not seen any study that actually looked at it so that makes it more exciting but also more worrying at the same time because we are already experiencing it, it and yet we don't understand so yun po there's really a dearth of literature discussing this aspect the the, the one that you discussed and the one that you pointed out and it makes it interesting because there's a lot of opportunities i guess for for scientists like me and new scientists coming in to to go into this field po, sorry i can't have a figure in my head on how much uh, guess na lang guess na lang guess na lang shall we die first from physiological effects of the direct microplastics to the you know the plankton the fish and then sa atin yung physiology natin or indirectly through the hubs dun sa community biofilms what your... it's a good it's a good question as an ecologist i think we will die first by hunger because uh, <laughs> healing all the base of the food web, including the copepods that feed the higher trophic le level, would, could actually result into collapse of fisheries. And I think that's going to happen more, I know, for, for me, it's going to happen more in more feasible way than the, us dying, consuming, and uh, eating the plastics. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ma'am Virgie. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sorry, sir, thing. Major choppy po. Ay, ito, ito, ito. Uh, we consider the contribution of Punja in plastic degradation. Um, yes, to answer the question of Sir Eldrin po, we are now uh, collaborating with the uh, University of the Philippines Baguio and some other uh, colleagues to actually look at the food side. Yeah, take that out. Um, the problem, I think the challenge looking at the microbial communities is that it's, it's really diverse. It's one of the, the I think it's the, the, the most diverse groups of organisms from archaea, prokaryotes, to fungi, to, to microbial eukaryotes. And we need more scientists, and we are actually open for collaborations. If you're interested, we've got programs and funding to support your research. Uh, yeah, uh, yes. So we're interested with that. Are you looking at the degradation of BPA? Not yet. Uh, I have an incoming PhD student who will actually be looking at the different types of plastics, including the BPA. Hopefully, we can do that. Uh, thank you for the question, uh, po, uh, Augustine. Okay, thank you very much, Deo. So we 